Hi guys, I'm Minji Kim for Relearn to Share, and the topic for today will be morale, philosophy, and ethics. Now, with the four lectures on social contract, free will, utilitarianism, and moral philosophy, you might ask, why do we have to learn about free will, ethics, and social contract for this lecture? After all, the subject is political philosophy. But here's what I think. These lectures are like the prequel for the actual political theories that I'll be introducing. And these concepts will provide you context and the background of political theories and help you understand the ideas easier. And starting from the lecture, we'll actually dive into different philosophers' ideas on nations. The first philosopher on moral philosophy will be Aristotle. Aristotle was the first person who came up with the concept of ethics. To be exact, he came up with the concept of ethos, which means the science of ethics. And this itself is significant because this also means that he tried to answer the question of how humans should act and behave. Aristotle also connects his political theory to ethics by saying that politics is the examination of how the government should behave and politicians should rule and define ethics as how an individual should pursue good. He believed that a person with an outstanding character must have a desire to do the right thing. And that person not only does the right thing, but also has to do with the right time and the right way. The virtues that Aristotle considered as the most desirable were bravery and temperance. He believed that when an individual is able to master bravery and temperance, one will also be able to control one's desires too. He also added that acting is good. Acting in good and rightful ways would bring absolute pleasure. This means that when one is able to control oneself from the desires to get pleasure from things like food, that one will be able to gain absolute pleasure, which will make that one much more happier. Aristotle also tells us that actions are equally important as the intention itself. For him, a virtuous person absolutely should study one's virtues, but not only that, that one should also put it onto action and do something good. We call it practical ethics. For one to be ethical, one should first learn what is ethical and then practice them. And he adds that those ethical actions would only be good if it is used to eventually achieve a virtuous life. The next philosopher is Kant. Now we can't leave out Kant when we talk about moral philosophy. As I explained to you in the previous videos, Kant's theories on morality talks about the universal law that everyone has inside themselves. But it is actually more than that. In my second video, which I handled utilitarianism, I told you that utilitarianism has the trait of consequentialism, meaning that it decides an action's good or bad according to the action's consequence. Compared to utilitarianism, Kant's moral philosophy, which is called deontology, focuses on the decision-making itself, not the consequences and results, but the decision-making process and the deciding of the right or wrong. Kant believed that a morally con correct ruling system and the actions under such systems make those actions right, regardless of the consequences. And what's unique with Kant's theory is that a moral action must derive from reason. He believed that every human being is capable of reason, and this helps us bring the idea of duty and moral obligation. And this duty and moral obligation is what is commonly known as the universal law. It is universally applied to all of us and gives us the rules or laws to help us to do the right thing, overcoming our desires and instincts. However, if a guy tries to act good because of one's religious character, then Kant would say that this action would not be truly moral because the motivation was one's religious faith, not one's will. Therefore, for Kant, will would be the only thing that is truly good or something that is considered good without qualification. Now let's move on to the moral philosophy of Confucius. The moral philosophy of Confucius has two important concepts. They are Jen and Li. Jen is the concept that humans are distinguished as a human by an innate natural goodness. He said that Jen was the virtue of virtues and that it underlies in all other virtues, making them an outgrowth of Jen. Although Confucius did not give us a specific definition of Jen, Jen and its, all of its following values are more important than life itself. 
In other words, he believed that it is more important to maintain the ethical and the innate standard of humans than to seek one's own personal interest and pleasure. And with this kind of a context added to it, Jen would be similar to the concept of the greater good, as we say. Then where can you find Jen? Resisting and controlling the pleasure and desires and acting kindly and good to others instead, this is how Jen would be found. Therefore, Confucius asked us to practice Jen and spread it to others. And he explains that those actions would eventually contribute to making a well-ordered society. Now let's move on to the second concept, Li. According to Confucius, Li is what leads humans to act to gain benefits and act to earn a stable life. It helps humans to spread Jen. Now, the system of Li is divided into different senses. The first sense talks about how humans should interact with others in a moral way and provides a guide in human relationships. This is called property. It is basically about people being kind and positive to each other, choosing good and moral actions instead of the bad ones. The first sense of Li also contains the five relationships. This is what Confucius suggests to maximize Jen. These five actions are quite specific. They are father and son, elder brother and younger brother, husband and wife, friend to friend, the ruler and the subject. It talks about how they should respect each other, be loyal, and more to build a good relationship. Now, there is this one last concept of Confucius that I would like to talk about, which is E. This is the innate sense that makes humans to do something good. This is possible because humans are able to process reason and has the moral sense to distinguish whether an action is right or wrong. Yi also lets us naturally know what the right thing to do is, and this can be talked as our intuition. Today, we looked at the moral philosophy of three philosophers, Aristotle, Immanuel Kant, and Confucius. Whose theory was the most interesting to you? Do you agree or disagree? Or do you have any other ideas on morality? Hope this video was helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in my next video. Bye.